Okay, so in the last session, uh, once we discussed basically uh, how an operator gets access to an application, right? So just a small recap. So we have operator ID, and that operator ID has um, access group, right? That access group actually has um, application. So that's how you know which applications access you have, right? And of course, the access group also has portal. So that, that way you know which portal you are going to be able to access, right? But along with that, there's one more thing that access group has, roles. The roles tells you basically what you can do on the application. That's the authorization, okay? What, I mean, I mean, of course, which application you have access to, that's fine. Which portal you have access to, that's fine too. But what you can do on those portals and um, application, that gets defined into role, okay? So let's have a look at that, um, basically, the role and what, what do we have in the role. So role is part of RBAC setup, okay? <coughs> RBAC. There are two main authentication mo uh, model in Pega, RBAC and ABAC. RBAC is role-based access control. This is always going to be there in any Pega application because you will definitely need an access group and through access group you, you have roles only that then only you can access the application. So RBAC is must. Okay. So See, access group is nothing but a role kind of thing, right? If you talk about in the business term, you say user. User is role on that application, right? I'm not talking about the technical role, rule. I'm talking about in business sense, the role of a person, right? On the application. It could be manager. It could be anything else, right? So if you are get, giving them uh, the access based on their role, that's role-based access control. And how do we do that? Through the access group, okay? So in RBAC, we create a ROs, access role to object, okay? That what you have access to in the application. Now, ARO is configured based on the class, okay? The ARO is configured based on the class. Let me show you guys how does it work, okay? So uh, we have uh, an access group. We created an access group public, right? Now, this is intended to facilitate creation of new form, new application, new case, right? At the moment, it has admin access. These are the roles, administrative role. We do not give them the administrative role. So, we will create our own role, okay, for this user. So, roles, role naming convention usually goes like um, application name iPhone role name okay that's how we create roles usually okay the name nomenclature is like this so we are going to define a new role public okay let's create it so see there are some basic setup that a user need to have in order to access Pega application. And that is included in a role called application hyphen user four, okay? So you can have multiple dependency in the role. So if you specify anything here as a dependent role, this particular role, the public role will automatically have all the access that this role has defined. So that is a basic role that every user needs. Okay, so we will say OBS and Pega set it up. Uh, Pega sets it up when you create the application. Pega automatically sets it up. Okay. Now along with that, and if you open that base role, basically the user four role, this is actually inheriting from Pega provided basic role. Okay, this is important to have the user for either from the Pega rules or from your application inherited in your role for one reason 
and for more than one reason but one most important reason is that pega keeps on updating this in every release okay so if you might clone this as well you might create a copy of this and you continue to use but pega will in future releases not upgrade your rule set your role right pega will only update pega rules user code so you should have always have the direct dependency on the pega rules user for so that if pega introduces a new feature and it adds that access in the user for role you already have that in your role covered you you don't miss out to those features because when you upgrade if pega rules um, colon for user for has more access and your role is uh, directly inheriting from that so you will automatically have access to those new features so for that reason this should always be there okay all right um let's come back here submit this save it now this user is going to um, basically be able to create cases right so if you look at the case class so the new saving account right that means this user we need to give them access give this user access to this class right so add click on add if you click on here you will add an aro access role to object okay every entry here will be an independent aro okay so let's it will say for which class you want to define the access control okay so i'll say this one now what access i mean these are the things that we set up here should this user or the user having this role be able to read the instances of this class now instances of this class means the cases that you will create because this is case class right should the user be able to read it yes they should be able to read it right they they should know where their um i mean they will create it as well and they should be able to read the status and everything right of course they will create a new new application right they should be able to create new applications so right now what is this value five so um this is basically production level in pega we have five production level one is experimental two is development third is your test fourth is your stage or pre-production and fifth is production this is you can have access when rule here as well to check give the access con conditionally if you click open this this is nothing there okay so if you provide one to five that means pega will determine in which environment you can read it five means up to production i can read it in everywhere if i just say two means i can read the instance but up to dev if we are working in um, test environment i won't be able to do that but here we need up to five right as well the user should be able to create case in the production as well should this user be able to delete any case any instance of the case no we should not give them access to delete any instance they should be able to read the rules from this class whatever rule you have developed otherwise it will be problematic to render the screen and everything write rule they will never write any rule they will not configure right zero delete rules no they shouldn't be i mean they will not be doing the development they should be able to execute any report or any activity that comes there okay privilege uh privilege is something i'll cover towards the end okay so let's save it i'm just give, going to give you a demo only okay so now i'm going to log in with this um, with a, an operator that has this access group okay public access group so this is the operator So I can log in with this operator and try to demo you the stuff there. At the moment, I will be able to create a case. If you do not specify any restriction, the users by default have access to all the classes. Okay. So let me just open. I should be able to create this. 
case properly right no problem able to create and able to see it now for the demo purpose i'm going to modify this and i'm going to say you cannot create any new instance okay i'll not have him or her basically this user or any user with that access group create an instance let me log off once and now if i try to create an application um, oh hold on did i save it properly new saving account save it oh i haven't updated the access group my bad so this access group should be saved as well right after then after providing this detail so now let me log off and log back in again okay you cannot create any case this case will not be created got it similarly this user might be doing certain things to save the data from the in data class as well so you could put all those restrictions that okay you can do this or not right so that's how we specify our back and create a aro this line is aro okay now I'm going to give them the access, the right access, okay, to the case so that it doesn't fail. Now, there's one more concept called privilege. Now, privilege, privilege is actually um, used to control rule execution. There are a lot of rules to support privilege. So, if you specify a privilege on a rule, then the user having those privilege would will be able to execute that rule only, okay. So at this moment, this user has access to uh, right instances, right? So let me try that out, demo that that uh, user is able to create uh, a case. And then I'll try to prevent that using privilege. See, it's all okay. User is able to create rules. Now, flows, support, privilege, a lot of rule type, flow, flow action, um, activity, they all support privilege. Now, in this case, the very first flow that we have is supposed to be basically supposed to be completed by the user only, right? That user, uh, basically the public user. But if I prevent this through a privilege, so you go to the process tab of this one. Some some rule have it on the security tab. Some rules have in, in the process. So I'm going to privilege is just a token kind of thing. Okay, I'm just going to create a privilege called um, create saving bank account okay so this is going to be in the same class where the rule is i'm saving that means now that someone who has this privilege can only execute this particular flow so now if i try to create another case i'm not authorized to execute this rule I can create the case. I have access to create the case, but I don't have access to the flow. A rule, right? It could be any rule. Some some critical rules we try to prevent through privilege and we grant those privilege to the rules which who, who are supposed to be able to do that, execute that rule. Now, if I want to give them uh, give this user access, I will add this privilege in the ARO of that class. So this is the class. I will have to specify that privilege here. If you just press down arrow, all the privilege from this class automatically come. Label, right? So, um, Hive is okay for up to production. Now, let's say that I wanted to give the public user um, access to the privilege only for experiment environment, not to the development. I'll show you guys how that, how will that play out. But at this point of time, I have given the privilege. See, the user is able to create it. Now I'm going to change it back and I'm, I, I will say that okay only in the experiment environment you can create the execute that flow production level one 
not in the uh, this is development development is two save it let's try to create another case i don't have access right if i change it back to two i'll be able to create it and you can provide a special when condition called access when let's say is public only public user will have access to that if we are using that rule so this is uh, this is similar to when rule but it's called access when rule okay because of the uses of it so you can specify any parameter here um we could check that uh, what role this user has and things like that at the moment i'm just going to say true only okay i will not specify any condition just wanted you guys to have a look at that that you could you could specify mm, one second should be expression and i'll only write true okay so this is always going to be true one depend and okay it has access to that so that's how we set up aro in rollback system this is quite easy but you just need to focus on and you need to have understanding basically what role users can execute which role can execute how and you need to know the tools that is available for you so of course you have to specify the class on which you want to control it give those accesses okay you could have access when condition defined as well if you want to check certain things that okay only these users will be able to access someone belonging to this organization or that unit things like that or someone having a special privilege or things like that right you can always define that so that is how we conclude uh, that's how we configure role and privileges in that